Hello everyone, it's Brooke here from Anita Good Design. I hope you are just as excited as I am for today's watch and stitch. As you know, it is August 2nd, so we are in a brand new month, which means a brand new watch and stitch coming your way with different techniques to offer you. So for today, I will be teaching you about loop fringe, which you might have learned with me in our last month's watch and stitch. But this time, we get to hoop our fun project. So if you're stitching along with me today, we are doing loop fringe. We're doing design number five, which is our dress form. Uh, things you will need for today's project are tearaway stabilizer, your base fabric of choice, which I have this really pretty light pink uh, to go along with our design, your embroidery threads of choice, a six inch wood embroidery hoop, um, a ruler if you need that for trimming, rotary cutter and a mat if necessary, your curved tip applique scissors, your embroidery needle, and your wonderful machine. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited to have you all in here with me today as we move into August. Again, if you're looking for these designs, you can go ahead and find this on our website for Watch and Stitch in August. Okay. So I have my little handy tutorial right here in front of me just in case we have any issues or bumps. For today, I'm gonna to have you hoop a piece of tearaway stabilizer. We'll go ahead and place our design into the machine and we're gonna run our first machine step which will be the placement stitch for our base fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and run my placement stitch in a uh, burnt orange color. That way you're able to see it on the tearaway and also the beautiful pink fabric that we have here. Uh, no worries, we'll go through the steps as we go, um, but don't worry about this color popping through. So we're gonna go ahead, run that first machine step, which is the placement stitch for our base fabric. Now what's nice about this design is it comes in one size, and we have minimal stitching. So for this design, it's showing me 3,806 steps. Um, I mean, stitches, that'd be a lot of steps in, a, <laughs> in your embroidery design. Uh, 300 and, or 3,806 stitches, and we have eight wonderful steps for today's project, which means it's gonna be nice and easy for us. And I also have in the printout some of our other designs that you can look forward to as well if you are looking to purchase our watch and stitch. Okay, so for the first step, we have run the placement stitch for our base fabric. Now in your tutorial, it's telling you to place your fabric right side facing up. Be sure your material is at least two inches larger than your placement stitch. You might see here that I have extra room when I am placing down my fabric. This is just so I feel nice, comfy, and cozy when I am um, getting ready to hoop, I wanna make sure I have plenty of room so you can follow along with your tutorial or you can go ahead and estimate um, a bigger piece. Now, I know some of you are probably asking, can I hoop my base fabric along with my tearaway stabilizer? And the answer is yes. However, all you would need to do is skip the first step, which would be for the placement of your base fabric. So for today, I'm going to follow exactly how our tutorial is running. So we have our first step all done. I ran this in a burnt orange, like I said before, so you will hopefully be able to see it. I'm gonna hold it up here, and hopefully I get the clearance. Can they, are they able to see the? Get a little closer. Closer? Yes. So as you can see, it's a circle for our awesome hoop, and our design is gonna be placed on the inside of this wonderful circle. I'm going to go ahead and lay my base fabric over top of my circle. Now, as your tutorial says, you wanna make sure you have two inches of material left over so when you're hooping, you have everything all set and ready to go. Like I said before, I'm gonna use a bigger piece just to play it safe, make sure I have enough room. Now, to get my piece to stay exactly how I would like it to, I'm gonna go ahead and use some embroidery tape to tape it in place. If you don't have tape and you would like to use a temporary spray adhesive, you can also use that as well. But for today, I'm gonna to go ahead and use this pink embroidery tape, which just fits my theme. So I'm gonna kind of roll with this one. Now for your next machine step, we are going to use that same burnt orange color just so you can see this um, when we are ready to 
uh, hoop and so you can see it along the way. But no worries if you see, your, see the stitching, we will go over this at the end. Uh, no need to panic. So we'll make sure our fabric, base fabric is nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead, place it into our machine, run our next machine step, which is step number two. And this will be the tacking stitch for our base fabric. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. I hear we have a customer, a viewer, a watcher who is joining us from South Africa, I believe it was, which is quite amazing that we've been able to reach all the way to South Africa. So that's, that's crazy, that's awesome. Um, so welcome one and all. Um, I hope you are just as excited as I am. Um, if you are enjoying and if you learn something new along the way, don't forget to tap that like button and share this video with all of your friends. Okay, so we just finished step number two, which is the tack down of our base fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the machine so I can show you what this looks like. Cool. So as you can see, this is ran again in a different color. I just wanna make sure that you are able to see this along the way. But if you choose to use a different color in the end, you will see that um, the color choice for the tack down of your base fabric will not matter. So now we need to run the placement stitch for where our applique is going to go. And for today's design, we are using design number five which is our dress form. And it's super cute and super fitting, as some of you might know from uh, my past um, watch and stitches. I went to school for fashion design, so this is kind of fun for me. It's kind of fitting in this aspect. So I'm gonna go ahead, place my hoop back into the machine. I'm gonna run my step number three, which is the placement stitch for my dress form applique. Now I kind of wanted to show you something here today. As I was selecting my fabrics, um, I wanted to do something a bit fun. So in your tutorial, let's see if the front. So in the tutorial, um, hopefully uh, they can, are they able to see the little dress form here? Okay, perfect. So this dress form in here, we used a light pink applique on what looks like a white base fabric. I wanted to do something a little bit more fun. So I chose this beautiful print that we have here. However, there's a few books inside the print. So I have a term, I'm sure you've all heard it before and have done this yourself, but I chose to fussy cut my fabric. So that way I can have the floral applique be my book. So you may see um, if you're fussy cutting, if you've heard of this term before, um, I am just trimming to make sure that I am getting the floral print instead of the book because I thought this floral print would be super fun. Um, I chose colors that would match the fringe as well. So that is our piece for today. So you can see here that I have the beautiful florals and instead of getting the books in there, I just wanted the florals. So that is what I'm saying when I fussy cut my fabric. Okay. I'm gonna take this back out of the machine just so we can show what it looks like. Here we had just run um, step number three, which is the placement stitch for our standard applique. Now, when you have your standard applique all selected, you're gonna go ahead and lay that fabric right side facing up, cover your placement stitch completely. Now, in order to keep your fabric in place, you can again use our, um, well not our, but you can use embroidery tape to keep it in place, or you can use a temporary spray adhesive as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape the bottom and top of my fabric to ensure that it stays in place for me. I'm gonna go ahead, place my hoop back in the machine, and I am going to run my next machine step, which will be the tacking stitch for our base fabric. So before I run it, you can see the applique is covering the entire placement stitch, all taped in place, secured and ready to go. So now we are on step number four. What size are you using? Um, I am using, this one looks like it's a five by seven, I believe for my hoop. Um, the design is one size and it fits four, Point, or the design size in general is 4.8 by 4.8. So I believe this one is a five by seven. Okay. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and move this fancy fabric out of the way. And I have now run my placement stitch. Now for you to see the pl placement stitch, I probably should have went with a brighter color. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim away my excess fabric and then I'll show you what my design looks like once I trim it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that tape from my applique fabric. I'm going to take my sharp curved tip um, embroidery scissors. Um, our favorite is Gingham's. They are nice and sharp and they cut the fabric nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and trim away my excess fabric close to the tacking stitch line and then I will show you what our um, dress form design looks like with the applique. And it's really pretty with that um, beautiful floral color that I chose for this one. Um, again, you can use any sort of textile that you desire for your project when it comes to your standard applique. I chose this fun cotton because um, I love to have a bold print in my projects. But if you would like to use a solid base fabric as well, you are absolutely welcome to. So you wanna make sure that you're trimming as close as you can to that tacking stitch line. This just assures that when we go to our step, which is the satin stitch to secure that applique fabric, that just ensures that our applique fabric is not poking through the satin stitch. So I use my scissors. Um, I know I've had a couple people ask before what kind these are. They are the Ginger scissors, which you can find online or at your um, local dealer. And here you can see that I trimmed away our excess material from our dress form. All right, so now, as I said before, trimming away your standard applique as close to the edge as possible is great for your satin stitches because step number five is going to be that satin stitch outline and you wanna make sure that your fabric isn't peeking out. So for this one, um, and I'm sure most of you have known or learned this as you've stitched along with me. I love a good metallic thread. I love sparkles. I love bold prints and fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, this Floriani color. Unfortunately, our tag isn't on here, so I'm not sure what the number of this one is. Um, but I'm going to use this shiny pink metallic thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that on here. I think it'd be super fun to add a little bit of texture to um, these lighter, uh, new, more neutral fabric colors. Okay, so again, we are now on step number five. This is for the satin stitch outline. In case you are just joining us, we are moving into our August watch and stitch. So today is the second, we have a whole new thing, a whole new um, bit of material for you for the August issue. If you're wondering how to get um, our August all at, or, uh, or, uh, our August watch and stitch, you can head on over to our um, I need a good design website. Wow, I'm like talking too fast today. I apologize. But yes, you can find our watch and stitch on our Anita Good Design website. Thirty dollars, and you will have this month's designs. We have some really fun stuff coming your way with um, a few of our educators. Next week, you have Brian. The week after that, Melissa. And then you will have Drea. So we have a fun month of fun material. You're going to learn a little bit about lace ornaments. You're going to have some fun with printed fabric and even 3D organza flowers, which is really exciting. Okay, so I told you before that we are doing the loop fringe portion of our watch and stitch. Um, we have five designs and we are working on design number five today. This is our um, dress form design. Now I'm going to hold these up to the camera while my satin stitch is running. Again, we are on step number five, which is the satin stitch for the dress outline. So we have a couple um, other designs in here that I want to show you because they are super cute. And the first two designs are a cat and a sunflower. Now the center of the sunflower has the fringe and the flowers have the fringe. Um, and for the cat, the collar has the fringe and they are very cute. So you can see a couple pictures up here. Is this a good angle for them? Okay, cool. So those are just two designs that we have. And then the other two aside from our dress form is a cute cactus. Um, where the blooming flowers are the fringe, and then we have a little hedgehog who is fringy as well.
So there are five super cute designs to choose from. Um, they are all the same size, so 4.8 by 4.8. Stitch counts will vary, but the fun never ends because there is um, different steps for applique in here and colors of thread. So this is our loop fringe for our watch and stitch. Again, you can find this on our website for $30. Um, and if you're stitching along today, welcome. I hope you're learning something new and having some fun. Okay. Do we have any questions out there? No questions. Well, that's great because either I'm teaching very well or everybody remembered what I taught last time. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with both. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh yes. Um. So I, my awesome moderator just reminded me about a gift card. So let's do a nice uh, twenty dollar gift card. Why don't we comment loop down below so we can get that going for you guys. Um, Julie Page, can I have you do me a favor? Um, let's see. Actually, I might, I might be okay. It looks like we're having a little bit of an issue with our tension, but no worries. I'm gonna try to get that going for for us. I think I might be okay, but I might have you grab something here oh, okay. in a second. We'll see how this next one runs. So I'm just re-threading my thread here. I noticed that I can see some of our bobbin popping through on the top of our design. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and re-thread this one. And actually, let's go ahead and change the bobbin. Would you be able to grab me one of those? Sure. It's right in this top drawer right here. Let's go ahead and just change that little guy out. Do we have a lot of loops getting dropped in the chat? We sure do. Awesome. I know we're all excited for that $20 gift card. So while we're waiting on the bobbin, I have to ask, now I have a question for all of you. Has anybody in the chat um, saw our Anita's blog? I'm very curious. So I'm gonna, gonna drop that down. Oh, does that work? No. Mm, uh, maybe a fuller one. Okay. There's different colors. Just white, hopefully. Uh, that was the last. Oh, in the corner? There yeah. Go. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so yes, back on, I want to say it was June 5th, 4th, 6th, somewhere around there, uh, we launched Anita's blog, and it's a fun way for you to also sew along with me um, when I am not behind the camera. So I have all these fun tips and tricks. I teach you all these neat things and we have some fun DIY projects along the way. I also have an email. It's um, blog at anitagooddesign.com and you are able to send in any requests and hopefully I am able to write about them and assist you along the way. So this past Friday we had a blog released and I taught you how to find um, the perfect size quilt that you are looking for. We have a design size guide and we also have a fabric calculator. So I teach you about your um, design files and your sizes for your quilt blocks and then how much fabric you need for that said design. Okay, so I'm gonna... Oh, yay! Um, our moderators are telling me that you love the blog so far, which is super exciting. Um, I have another one coming this Friday for you all. Um, that is the, the next thing. We launch every Friday at 9 in the morning. So you will have something new coming to you every Friday. Um, so for this Friday, I will be teaching you a little bit more about stabilizer. I know a lot of you tend to ask some questions um, about what kind of stabilizer we're using for our projects and whatnot. So you'll be learning a little bit more about stabilizer for our next blog. Okay, so I changed out my bobbin and I re-threaded my machine in hopes that we have a little bit um, better 
sewing experience coming our way. So now I'm gonna move on to the next step. We just completed step number five, which was for the outline of our dress form. I'm gonna go ahead and do step six, which is the dress form, um, the dress form details. So it's going to be the top piece of your dress form and the stand piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to 723 Floriani. And you may be able to tell from the beginning that I'm using different colors. Um, I am the one that preps our watch and stitch um, sessions. So I pick out the colors that we choose and I like to show you a little bit of a different version each time. So that way you have a little bit more inspiration when you're working on your project. So we will be having a blog post come out every Friday. We just had someone ask about our blogs, our blog post. So we will have our blog post come out every single Friday at 9 a.m. So that means we currently have, I think between 12 or 13 blogs already listed on our website. Um, I taught you all how to make a mini mesh sandbag for the beach when you're carrying your toys, um, your children's toys, or you just want to carry your flip flops, or you're walking down the beach and you have all of these beautiful sea seashell treasures you picked up along the way. You can toss them in your mesh bag and it will make um, carrying them a lot less easier because you're not carrying the sand along with you. So we have. Um, a little bit about that. Last week was the how to calculate your fabric and using our design size guide. Um, we also had patriotic pillow, which was awesome. So I taught you how to make a beautiful uh, red bow for a patriotic pillow. And we have a lot of really good other things coming as well. But you can look forward to a blog every Friday at 9 a.m. Yes. So do we have a winner for our gift card? This is a $20 gift card for Anita Good Design. We do, today's winner is Ella May. Ella May, congratulations. You are the lucky winner of today's first $20 gift card. Congratulations. And we will give you all the info that you need in the chat to get that gift card. Okay. So the bobbin change was the best move and the rethreading because this is looking so much better um, than it was before. So after I finish step six, I'm moving on to step number seven. This is for the dress fringe. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use a different color that I've seen throughout this design. I'm gonna go ahead and um, use this brighter orange because they have some brighter orange leaves throughout this beautiful little dress. So I'm just incorporating my colors into this fun, dusky kind of color palette. Now, as I am getting ready to stitch out um, step number seven, I have a flash sale for today. And it's a flash sale that I think you all are going to absolutely love because I know this um, segment is one of my personal faves. This is Adventure, Animal Adventure Benny Bunny. Now, Benny Bunny is on sale and you can get him, luckily, for half off. And this came out in July of 2021. And actually, Benny was one of um, the very first sets of tutorials that I ever wrote. So that's actually very exciting. So if you have our all access issue, um, whether you're digital or physical copy, you might see that I was the one behind our little hopper friend over here. So Benny comes with 17 blocks. Um, he is a part of our mix and match series, which means you can also combine him with other animal adventure quilting projects. Um, the hoop sizes for our Benny Bunny are recommended at five by seven and nine and a half by 14. And I'm gonna hold him up once again, but maybe get a little bit closer because he has a lot of fun stuff. So from um, our folded fabric borders to straight up uh, standard embroidery, there's a lot of fun colors in this one and you can really have fun with our Benny Bunny. Hmm? 
Alrighty. So we have our uh, fringe embroidery running at the moment. And I'm super happy that um, the machine wanted to behave and we are able to fix our little bobbin poking out. Um, but everything is going well. So we're almost done. We have one more step in our standard embroidery before we move on to the hooping process. Now, I know that we um, are saying that you need a six inch embroidery hoop for this project, but you don't have to hoop this if you um, don't want to. You can place this design on pretty much anything that you, um, your heart desires or what project you're working on. So if you want, if you're a little fashionista like me and you like to gather some fabrics, add this fringe dress form to um, your fabric tote bag, add it to your sewing room pillows, um, frame this little guy or hang it up with your embroidery hoop. Okay, so the next step before the fringing process is to do that inner satin stitch, that smaller satin stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to make this one this um, dusty or yellow color because it's continuing on with the colors. I'll hold up this fabric again, it is super pretty. And this is how I chose my fabrics or my threads for this project is I chose to pick threads that match certain leaves throughout this dress. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch to this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and run that step before I show you our design before we actually do the fringing. I like to wait to the end to fringe so we don't run into any issues as we're continuing out through our embroidery design. Now this step is crucial and this is how you know it is a fringe technique. That inner satin stitch is set as an anchor. So the inner satin stitch is specially digitized by our wonderful digitizers here in-house. And what it does is it anchors um, the threads when you go to um, use your handy seam ripper to slice the back to create that loop fringe. So that's what helps create that loop is it anchors it for us. So we're going to go ahead and let that run. And again, if you're just tuning in, we'll hold this little guy up one more time. Benny Bunny is on sale. He is 50% off and he has a lot of fun designs. He also goes with our mix and match quilting method, which means you can use him with other animal adventure designs um, or any other of our quilt blocks that carry the mix and match series. You can use those to intertwine your blocks. Now there's 17 designs for our Benny Bunny. Hoop, recommended hoop sizes are five by seven and nine and a half by 14. Um, and yes, feel free to shop and let me know um, what you come up with. As always, we love to see what you guys create. So if you tag us on social media, you might have a chance to be featured on our page. Okay, so we are almost done with this last step in the embroidery design. And then we're gonna go ahead and flip our hoop over. But first I wanna show you what it looks like before we fringe. Now again, I'm going to show this up to the camera, but you are going to see that our bobbin was poking out around the satin stitch that is holding our dress form fabric. So unfortunately, that beautiful metallic color is gonna be kind of washed out with the bobbin, but no worries. Um, this is what the beautiful fringe will look like before we actually fringe it. So as I hold it up here, you can see the or the uh, yellow is the smaller satin that anchors the bigger satin. So when we go to flip our hoop over and seam rip those bobbin stitches, that smaller satin stitch is going to anchor my loop fringe to create that beautiful, nice loop. Now for this project, I know um, some of you have asked before, what parts are we fringing? So today we are fringing the neckline and we are also fringing the two um, larger satin stitches towards the bottom of our dress. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna flip your hoop over. We're gonna take our handy little seam ripper. As I said last time, this is the only time I like to use a seam ripper. 
So we are going to go ahead and slice the bobbin stitching only in between our large satin stitch. So I'm starting with the bottom um, of the dress form. I'm starting with the top larger satin stitch and I'm just going through and using my seam ripper to slowly glide through the bobbin stitching. And you wanna make sure you are going nice and slow so that you're not catching any of the um, satin stitches in there. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom row. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the neckline. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and flip my hoop back over. And you can use your um, seam ripper or you can use tweezers um, or even your finger if you'd like to, but I'm gonna go ahead and take that top portion of my seam ripper and I'm just gonna gently glide it over top of the fringe. And this just helps pull that loop up So we have someone that would like to see it closer once I'm finished getting the loop out and absolutely, I would love to show you how beautiful this dress looks. The fringe looks amazing. The little loops are perfect. I'm still sad about my dress form satin stitch but we can't always have it perfect with our machine, right? Yeah, so someone asked if you could use curved tip scissors to fringe as well. I would just be careful when you're doing it. So here, if I were to just take the edge of my scissors, you could do that as well. Um, I would recommend not having them open when you're doing it just because of the sharp edges that you'll have on your scissors. I would recommend keeping them closed, but I don't see why that wouldn't be a problem to do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hold this close to the camera. Um, so you can see the beautiful fringe that we have from this dress. Okay. Perfect. Now it looks so pretty. I love how the loop fringe turns out. It's truly such a fun technique and super easy. You would be amazed at this project. Okay, so the next step in your tutorial is to hoop this beautiful masterpiece. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our tape and remove our design from the hoop. We have our six inch wooden hoop here. And as you can see, here we are all removed away from the hoop. And we're gonna go ahead and separate my two pieces. Whoever put this together really put this in here. <laughs> Oh man, wow, they really got this. <laughs> Isn't there another one back there? No. Sorry for the delay. I need to hit the gym so I can get <laughs> <laughs> these hoops separated maybe a little bit more easily. Um, does anyone ever notice it's always something with my lives, you know? There we go. Perfect, okay. 
So what you're gonna do is you're going to try to align your circle with your hoop. So I'm laying my design on the hoop and I'm gonna go ahead and place this tough hoop um, over top. So we have the metal or the, we have the wooden piece underneath our fabric. We're gonna lay our fabric down, try to align that with our circle. And we're gonna use that placement stitch as a guide as we um, place this. I'm gonna definitely loosen this a little bit. So use that placement stitch as a guide for your circle. Cynthia is dying to see the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the back of the fabric? Yeah. Okay. So we have someone that wants to see the back, which I will show you as soon as I can get this little thing hooped. Yes, okay. These are all great questions, by the way. Okay, so we used that placement stitch to, or our tacking stitch for our fabric in the beginning. Remember how I told you that I used a burnt orange um, placement stitch? So this helps us as it aligns our um, design in the hoop. Now, if you don't wanna place your design in the hoop, you can go ahead um, and skip those steps if you are looking to design or place your design straight on the fabric and you wanna do um, a pillow, you wanna do a tote bag, you wanna place this on something else, you're more than welcome to do that as well. All you would need to do is skip the first few steps. Um, however, I'm sure you're wondering now what happens with that inner circle. Now all you would need to do is remove the stitches from the circle using a seam ripper. It's super easy. Um, as you can see, as I continue to move through it, it's super easy to just remove those satins or remove those stitches that we have along the way. Now we have a couple questions, which I'm really glad that we, um, you guys are asking all these questions. So the next thing to do is how to clean up your hoop. Well, you can use some scissors. You can go ahead and trim your design around the hoop. If you want to have more of a fringe aesthetic, you can leave some room around the outside and just to let it um, stay. You can fold it behind your hoop and glue it in place. Um, the choice is yours. Now, a few of you were asking, is it obvious where to um, remove the back stitches? And you also would like to see the back of the hoop as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that over. Now it's really important to follow along with your tutorial as we show you where um, everything needs to be trimmed out. Because sometimes we have um, satin stitches in our designs, like the outside of our dress form, that is not fringe. Now you can tell that this is a loop fringe as it has that smaller satin stitch and the larger satin stitch. However, if you're ever second guessing and you're not sure what to trim, you can go ahead and pull your tutorial. Can they see this one in there? Cool. Uh, you can go ahead and pull your tutorial and it will show you what is fringed in each one. So for the dress form, we have the neckline and the two um, bottom pieces of the dress form. But if I were to do the hedgehog or if I were to do the awesome cactus, we would have the blooming sections and the fur of our hedgehog that are fringed. And you can also see too that they are secured by a very smaller satin stitch. Now it's important to make sure that if you are doing any sort of fringe um, for your design that your tutorial specifically states fringe. Um, that way our digitizers have specially digitized it to make sure that it anchors down and it stays exactly how it's supposed to be. We have a lot of really fun collections that involve this technique as well. Um, you've seen it in our last watch and stitch. You may have seen it in our 50s festive fringe. Uh, I think that was our 50s festive fringe outfits um, that were really pretty as well. Um, but that is exactly how you are able to pinpoint. You want to make sure that your tutorial is saying that it's loop fringe or it's fringe. The technique is just a smidge different. If it's fringe, it's not going to have that beautiful loop like you saw before. Um, but either way, they're basically done the same way. 
Now, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. I'm gonna hold this up one last time so you can see the beautiful dress form that we have here. Ignoring where our bobbin um, decided to pop through, I'm glad we decided to change and rethread, and the machine let us do our thing today. Now, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial on loop fringe. Don't forget to check out this week's blog. We have a lot of really fun stuff coming for August. Uh, we are posting every Friday at 9 a.m. Um, next week, you'll be doing lace ornaments with Brian. So that's super fun. We have an owl ornament that we will be creating. So I'm excited for that. And our Benny Bunny animal adventure is on sale for you and don't forget to admit, uh, don't miss out on that one as we have a lot of really good things and the last thing i want to say before i head out is if you haven't already picked up the greatest hits um pre-sale which is 175 on pre-sale we have extended that pre-sale for you all so head on over to our website for all of those goodies um, again thank you all for joining me for today's watch and stitch I hope you had an amazing time. I know I did. We'll see you next time.